Hey, what's up guys? I'm Sean from SRK Cycles, and this is a 2017 Yamaha XSR 900. And if you're looking at it, you're like, that kind of looks familiar. Well, it should, because basically, it's an MT-09. Test driving everything and anything with two wheels to help you find your next bike. I'm Sean Kerr, and this is SRK Cycles. When you dive into it, and when I say basically, I mean it's 1,000% an MT-09. Uh, same engine, same wheelbase, same, same wheels. The difference is just the body, the lights, the tank, the seat, and just kind of the setup. But it's completely an MT-09. Um, so if you like the MT-09, you're probably going to love this. Let's dive into this bike a little bit. 115 horsepower, 6-speed, liquid-cooled, chain drive, also weighing in at 430 pounds. It's a very light, nimble bike. Now, if you want to compare this to something like the, um, something that could be kind of comparable would be the GSX S750. This is 40 pounds lighter than the GSX S750. Now, some of the awesome features about this bike is it's fast, it's light, it's nimble. It does have a slipper clutch. If you look down here, CP3. It is rocking the cross, the Yamaha cross plane inline three cylinder. The style is a classic style, but not classic in the sense of like the Honda, what, what Honda's been doing with, with the remakes, like the CB1100 or the Honda Cub. This is more classic in the sense of it almost looks like something who a very well bike builder would put together. This is more the classic cafe racer of an old bike with modern touch made currently, which is a whole lot different than what, other, what the other companies are doing. And personally, I love it. Now normally this would bike, bike would have a big old nasty looking rear tail fender section. That's been taken off. This bike has an exhaust on it, which makes it obnoxiously loud. When you look down here, it's got the different mode buttons. So it does have, it's got the B standard and A mode. B mode with you know a little little lighter throttle response. You know, throw that in there when it's when it's rain or you're getting used to the bike. It also has different traction control settings, one and two. The bike is very, it's a very simple, simple bike. You hop on, turn the key. And what I was talking about before about how it looks like something that's that's classic but modern is you know styling like this, the way they hold the light on. You just have this bracket right here that like see like your buddy maybe could have made that if you look at the uh, look at the gauges you know the way the gauge is sat on how it's off centered from the key now obviously this bike does not come factory with these uh with these handlebar mirrors with factory mirrors like this these look better normal mirrors work better this is a great way to see a lot of your elbow now if you look back even though the tailpiece has been removed if you look back at the tailpiece it does have an integrated lighting system right down here which is almost unnoticeable where the side things flash and then it lights up for brake lights. That's actually pretty cool looking. Another interesting thing about this bike is it's actually a false tank. Now the tank is underneath there, but this is actually a tank cover. Very similar to what, uh, what Honda does with their CB1000s, where this is a tank cover, plastic piece, you pull that out, the tank underneath is probably ugly looking, but it's less like you're not gonna get dents in this. So, something hits it, it's not going to dent because it's plastic and then it's probably cheaper to replace if you just want to replace the outside tank cover. So here's the big question, why would Yamaha make pretty much the exact same bike but just with a different style and flavor? A, a couple reasons, one it's cheaper, they can make a cool looking bike and all the R&D is already done, you just gotta you know give it to another team and just make it look differently but why does, why does GM do it with the, with the Suburban, the Escalade and the Yukon? And ultimately, it's because you got it's it's a slightly different flavor. I know a lot of people really love the performance of the FC07 and the FC09 and MT09 and MT07, but not everyone looked the, like the actual styling. Now, with a bike like this, you have awesome classic slash modern styling, but you have all the performance, and it really is just a blast to drive. So the reason why you would buy a bike like this: one, the price is incredibly cheap. I think 8,900 bucks is MSRP. I would not consider this an entry-level bike. This is definitely more of an advanced to mid-level bike. It is, it is, it is snappy. It's twitchy. You got 115 horsepower, and that's shrunken down. You know, the top speed's not 180 miles an hour. I think top top speed is much lower. So this thing's really snappy and quicky at the lower RPMs. You know, you could easily accidentally drop your wrist a little bit and 
you know, pop the front end up. And I'll show you, I'll show you guys all that in the test drive. All right, so let's take this thing for a spin. But first, let's do the words of wisdom. A gentle, uh, Proverbs 15, 1, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. I've got a, I've got a lot of first-hand experience with that one. Man, it feels so good to be back on a bike. Whew. I love it. I'm so pumped to ride this thing. Let's do it. This is what this bike was made for right here. Oh, hold up. Still a little cold. Hold up. I should have taken it a little bit easier. I just love, I love the ergonomics of these bikes. It is extremely comfortable. The way I'm sitting up, good posture. My arms aren't super low. I could ride this thing forever, except for the exhaust is destroying my face it's just so nimble and ridiculously powerful I mean, remember this thing's just over 400 400 pounds and rocking 115 horsepower that's a killer power to weight ratio the ability that this thing has just to get really really low in the corners and I'm not doing it now but I'm just talking about it while I'm kind of getting a little low is incredible to have a bike with this cool styling but then that actually performs really really well now I will say this this does have um, this does have the exhaust I think this thing would run a little bit better with the uh, with the stock pipe on it honestly or you would have to uh, just get it tuned. All right. Stupid traction control. Let's turn that off. That's why I keep on getting bogged down. That's not it being cold. That's traction control. Hold up. There we go. <clears throat> now let's go do a test drive. Such a blast absolute blast to ride just shredding up the canyons has just instant just like throw your throw your arms back out of the socket type of power just everywhere everywhere you want it to be that is why this is not this is not an entry-level bike this is a very an extreme like this is probably twitchier than than leader bikes honestly I mean just incredibly torquey out of this cross plane three cylinder motor man this thing runs good okay so the fun thing about this bike is it takes a hundred fifteen horsepower and I know what you're saying like that's very similar to the horsepower that you would get on a on a 600 super sport you're right but this takes it and squishes it down, so it's got a it's got a much lower top speed than a 600 Super Sport, and all that range is a little bit more usable, which kind of in a way almost makes it completely unusable. If if if, if I went out and I I gave it full throttle in first, second, third gear, it will come up in every single gear. And probably in first and second gear come up pretty violently. Actually, let's let's go let's just go do it. If you need that second, third, fourth, fifth bike in your garage, and you want a bike that you just jump on, and every time you jump on, you're just just smiles and and excitement, and and let's all be honest, you're just kind of horrified. This is definitely the bike. And with as much noise that this bike makes gotta draw a lot of attention to yourself this has a very aggressive obnoxious exhaust it doesn't have to be that loud love the way this thing just throws down in the corners it really makes you feel like you're just a better rider than what you actually are Now, anytime you jump on a new bike and it's, it's got a little slightly different power band than what you're used to, it's, you always want to take it easy with the wheelies. 
just because you're not used to it, you know what I mean? You gotta kind of work into that. Maybe not everyone does, but I do. So when you're riding a bike like this, you feel like this is a man's man bike. It's a hot rod bike. You have all that power. You get 115 horsepower with 400 some pounds of weight. And all that, all that wind is just pushing down on your chest. This thing feels great on the highway. It does feel a little more stable than the FC07 does at the uh, at the higher speeds. I don't know why that is. I have no, I, I have no idea. But my personal experience with the FC07, which I love, when you start getting like 80 or 90 miles an hour, it just didn't feel that great. Which honestly, I don't mind that. In so many ways, I feel like this bike should replace most super sports on the high on the on the road. You don't really need a bike that can do 190 miles an hour on the street. And I'm I'm not trying to say you don't need big power because you do. But personally, you know, I, I like to ride leader bikes on the on the on the street just because they can pop wheelies at at second and third gear a lot easier than the 600s could. But you don't need that when you have a bike like this. The XSR 900 is a blast to drive. This thing's amazing, and I'm actually pretty excited for the XSR uh, 700 because that's going to be awesome too. Guys, all right, that wraps up the video. Do not forget to check out the next video. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, the M1 Moto gloves. I'm gonna zip up my gloves. The M1 Moto gloves lined with Kevlar are for sale as of right now. Check out the website. Click on the link below at bikesandbeardsgear.com, or possibly in the future it'll be a uh, M1 Moto gloves or M1Moto.com. All right, guys. We'll see you guys later.